Hi everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Frank Cornu. I'm a Fis 5 developer uh, and the original author of the PNP model solution. And I'm based in uh, in Montreal, Canada. Uh, so today I will show you some new features uh, released uh, in the December version of this web part of this solution. Um, so here is a, I have a page, a SharePoint page here. You, I think you already know the solution, the PNP model search web part. Um, so basically um, what you have to know with this web part, I won't go deep into the configuration, but what you have to know with the search web web part, which is the main web part of this uh, solution, you can customize the UI um, with different options, meaning you can just uh, adapt the, uh, the UI and the result display according to your requirements. So basically, we have multiple scenarios uh, supported in, uh, to, to, to customize the UI. The first one, I would say, would be the light one uh, in terms of customization. Uh, so you can just configure your property, your own properties, on search, uh, search managed properties, uh, edit placeholders, the queries, and so on. Uh, this is the basic scenario, okay? But we have also like advent scenario. So in these scenarios, uh, you can completely override the result uh, display. So for this, there is uh, an existing solution that you can use uh, to completely override this UI. So the first one is use the search custom renderer project. Uh, this is a project uh, that was made uh, one year ago, I guess, by Taral. Uh, so with this project, you just have total control over the UI and you can use a React component uh, to customize the, uh, the result display. By the way, <laughs> I forgot to mention that there is a new repo for the PNP model search web part. So this is uh, not hosted in the SPDEV solution repository anymore. So if you have issues or issues or Anything else, just go to the new repo Microsoft Search uh, slash PNP Modern Search and you can uh, start from there and get the latest release from there. There is also a nice documentation as well. So uh, you can just explore the documentation and uh, yeah, much more readable. Uh, okay, so for the custom renderer, you can use this to customize the whole display. And uh, the new feature I will show you is another way uh, to uh, let's say um, customize more, more granular, uh, which is the, the creation of custom web components. Uh, web components, um, you may have noticed some default layouts provided with this web parts already use this technique, the web component. This is the case for, this is the case, sorry, for the details list and the ties layouts. So if I click on the details list, for instance, and I will inspect the underlying uh, handlebar templates, you will see something like this, uh, PNP detail list and so on and so on. So these are web components wrapping React components. So this way you have, let's say the best of both world uh, in terms of UI customization. You can use React components, so create dynamic behaviors, and you can also benefit from the handlebar, handlebar context and you can still use CSS and HTML in your custom templates. So the new feature is basically now you have the ability to create your own uh, components. So how you can do this? Uh, in the PNP Modern Search web part, uh, PNP Modern Search Solution, sorry, you have a new project called Search Extensibility Library. So if you inspect the code of this um, project, so this is basically a SPFX library component project type. So this is not a web part, it's an extension, but a library components. Uh, few things you have to know for this project. The first thing is to get it work with the search result web part, you have to make sure the ID in the manifest is this ID. This is the only way to, let's say, load the library dynamically from the search result web part. So uh, you have to, keep this, this ID for now. Uh, I don't know the, another way to, to load the, this library. So first rule, keep this ID. Uh, then you have um, a main file here. So this is a demo, demo project. Uh, so it provides 
some interfaces, TypeScript interfaces that you can use to create your own and declare your own uh, components, web components. So all you have to do is create friendly name for your components. So let's say I will lose my custom components and a web component class with, that will be the logic of your components. So in this demo, I created a very basic components. So as you can see, there are some props here and there is the logic. So in this component, I can do pretty much anything I want. So in this ex example, I took, I took for instance, example, the, the panel component from the Office Real Fabric. Uh, library, but you can use uh, your own components, uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, another rule to get it worked in your templates, as you can see, there are some props here, and the usage of the components will be like this. So as you can see, my custom components, I can use it like, like this in my, uh, my templates. Uh, the way HTML attributes are translated into uh, React pro props. Uh, you have to follow this, the, this pattern, pattern. So as you can see, my string param is translated uh, in my string param here. So you have to use in your props uh, the camel case uh, syntax to get it work. So you have an example here. My string program is translated to my string program in props, and this is the same for uh, object param. Also, for complex types, let's say you have to pass uh, an object from the handlebars context to your web components. Uh, all you have to do for objects is just to stringify the object and get get the the version, the parse version uh, into your component. So this is the way you can pass complex uh, objects and properties. So then once you, re you created your uh, components, uh, what you have to do to, uh, uh, let's say to, uh, to, use, to use it in your search result uh, web part is pretty um, easy. So I will just go back here. As you can see in my template, I've de uh, declared my custom component, okay. If I save, ooh, nice. Okay, my component isn't here right now. The thing is, we if I have uh, to display this component, the thing I have to do is to bundle my solution. So just go to your project, search extensible library, go and bundle uh, ship, na na na. Anyway, you know the process. I won't, I won't go deep there, but bundle, then package. You have a beautiful package uh, as the output. Go to your app catalog. It can be the site collection app catalog or the global uh, app catalog, and just upload your package. Here, so the PNP search extensibility library demo. Just make this solution available to all sites. And if I go there, press F5, ta-da, my component is here. So as you can see, this is uh, my React components. So it uses the panel from the Office React Fabric library, and I, I can introduce dynamic uh, behaviors and so on. And ca I can benefit from the handlebars context, so the search results, uh, properties, item properties, and so on. So I think this is the most flexible uh, way to customize the, the UI because you have the underbar context, you have the ability to create your own components, your own granular components. So you can use them uh, in, let's say, in the global template. So let's say here in the, in the template, the whole template, or inside, let's say, for the manage, uh, for the detail list layout, you can also use them inside, for instance, column. So I can just write my custom components, na na na, and inject my properties, it will be the same. So a very flexible way to customize uh, your results. Um, also, um, regarding the code, you can, as of course, use React components and your own React components, but you can also benefit from, uh, sorry, the context of the web part. So in the base components, uh, class, 
that the library uh, provides, you can still use the web power context. Um, yep. oh, no, sorry, not there. Not there. This is much better. So you have this probably already provided. So it means you can, for instance, call your own web services and so on, blah, blah, blah. You can do whatever you want here. So the only thing you have to do is just to follow the structure. Uh, there is a built-in method that resolves attributes from HTML attributes to React props using the camel case uh, syntax. And there you go, you can inject your props into your components. And that's pretty it. Uh, keep the same ID, uh, implement the base class, upload to your app catalog, and here you go. You can just um, implement your, your web components. Uh, I think, so this is the, the new feature for the already available in the uh, December release. Uh, I'm uh, done for, for my demos. Thank you, Frank. Thank you.